Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at 1982's iconic The Gunslinger. We'll show you what to look for when trying to identify first US and first UK editions, as well as provide some historical context and thoughts on the book itself. Okay, so next up is the trade edition of The Gunslinger, um, also published by Grant in 1982. Um, this book is similar to the Signed Limited. It's got the same dust jacket, uh, exactly the same dust jacket. Uh, and um, the end papers are the same. The difference is the binding. So here we have a sort of plain brown board binding with gold foil stamping on the spine. Um, you're lacking that that image of the, of the bullet casings or the cartridge casings on the front. Um, so the signed limited is, is a much nicer book. Um, remember this is a $20 book. Uh, and you know, um, there were two, two editions of this. Um, this one will say first edition, uh, I believe the second edition says second edition, um, and the reason it's an edition and not a printing uh, is because elements of the design were changed. Um, so it was the same publisher. Uh, so no, you know, normally in that case it would be a second printing, but it's it's technically a second edition. Um, the it does have the same full color illustrations on the inside, and that's you know that's pretty much it. That's um, that's what the trade uh, gunslinger looks like. So um, it really wasn't, you know, I got my copy back in uh, 1989-ish, maybe, um, 1990, somewhere in there. Um, for this one, I think I paid, I don't know, 65 bucks or something like that. Uh, the signed limited cost me 225 or so, um, these, you could get these anywhere. These were like all over the place and used in rare bookshops um, for well under a hundred bucks. Uh, I wish I had the presence of mind to pick up a hundred copies cause I'd be rich, <laughs> but uh, no, I just have the one. Okay, so uh, the US edition of The Gunslinger came out in 1982. Um, by 1987, we had the second book in the series, uh, The Drawing of the Three, come out. And at that point, the book was unavailable in the UK. So um, in 1988, uh, the book first appeared in the UK um, as a trade paperback original. Uh, this book was published by Sphere Books. Um, and uh, so it's 1988, so it's um, six years after the original book first appeared in the US. Um, and this was um, a paperback, so never, never a hardcover in the UK. Um, you know, this kind of blue foil stamping on the front was, e you know, e easily damaged. So it's hard to find a copy that looks really, really nice. Um, this copy is pretty nice. Um, and this is the, the way the book first appeared in England. Uh, you can check to see if your copy is a first printing by looking at the copyright page. There is no indication of, uh, I'm sorry, I just don't want to crack the spine, but uh, it just says first published by Sphere of Books Limited in 1988. There's no indication of printing otherwise. Um, and the book does actually reproduce the same full color illustrations from the Donald Grant uh, edition. So um, this was in the UK, you, pr you pretty much got the, the, uh, the same treatment, but as a paperback. And this was six, this was a 699 uh, UK when it came out in 88. So a lot cheaper. Um, so there's the first British edition of the Gunslinger. Okay, and so finally we have the revised edition of the Gunslinger. Um, this is the first edition of the revised text. Uh, it was published in 2003. 
Um, and so what happened, I'm sure you guys all know this, but um, this, uh, so King was about to complete the series. Uh, Wolves of the Kala was about to come out and he felt that um, the original 1982 edition of the book, which was actually comprised of five shorter, you know, novelettes that were all uh, originally published in the late 70s to early 80s um, and were written uh, even earlier than that, were in a way not connected to the later novels. And he wanted to revise the book and connect it to, um, you know, to the fifth, sixth, and seventh uh, books. So the, he went in and fairly heavily revised it. I'm sure you guys know all this, but, um, you know, he he connected it to the later books. I personally found that this revised edition is much better, much, much, much better than the original. Um, he added, you know, all of the, uh, you know, connections to stuff that hadn't happened in the story yet back then, the Crimson King and references to 19, which of course is the day that he was hit by the car, June 19th. So 19 became a thematic number in the, in this Dark Tower uh, universe. Um, and anyway, um, I'm sure Mark is going to talk about this more than, than I need to, but, uh, so this was, um, this was published right before Wolves of the Kala. And why do I have it? Because the text was heavily revised and that means you need another copy. Um, so this copy, uh, this edition was published by Viking, uh, 2003. Um, it's got the Dark Tower book one now because they were, they published matching, uh, book two, book three, book four, which you don't really need because the texts in those were not revised. So unless you're some kind of completist, um, I don't have those later editions. I only collect first editions. But anyway, um, they took the illustrated end papers from Donald Grant. They re reproduced those here. And you can see if your copy is a first printing because it'll have a number line that goes down to one for first printing. Um, and I believe they actually reproduced the art. Yeah, so we have the actual artwork from the original book as well. Um, there you go, there's the cover of the Donald Grant book. But um, overall, I think the revised version is much better than the original one. It ties into the later books better. And, um, you know, it's a better read. But uh, obviously, as a collectible, this thing is much more common because uh, the first printing was enormous as opposed to the Gunslinger, which I think was 10,000 copies. Uh, I'm sorry, the original <laughs> Gunslinger from Grant was 10,000. And this was, I don't know the numbers, but I would imagine this was probably uh, hund hundreds of thousands of copies um, in the first printing. But anyway, um, that's the revised uh, Gunslinger from Viking. So the story of how the Gunslinger came to be is pretty interesting. Um, it was written, the five pieces were written um, separately from each other over a period of about 11 years. And it was started when Stephen King was a senior at the University of Maine. And he wrote the famous, the famous first line, perhaps the best first line he's ever written, even according to him, the man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. So in 1970, he wrote the first two sections, the gunslinger and the way station. And he returned back to the world of Roland uh, many times in the ensuing years. And I'm gonna consult my notes here because I wanna get this right. Um, he wrote the Oracle and the Mountain. Uh, during the time he was writing Salem's Lot, he wrote the Slow Mutants um, right after he finished working on The Shining. And he wrote the final section, The Gunslinger and the Man in, ba and the Man in Black in 1980. And his agent got the stories published in the magazine of, um, the magazine of fantasy and science fiction and they appeared um, between 1978 and 1981. 
Uh, the first the first story appeared in the October 1978 issue, uh, right after um, The Stand came out. And the second one came out in April 1980, and then the, the final three, February, July, and November 1981. And he had already um, he had already had some signed limited editions, and was um, a demonstrated fan of supporting small presses. And when um, Donald Grant approached him and said, "Do you have anything that might make a good signed limited edition?" Um, Stephen King uh, put forward the five stories of what later became the Gunslinger, and he hadn't initially been intending to republish them but it seemed like a good idea a special project to support a small press so the artist who did the iconic cover of the fantasia press edition of firestarter michael whelan um, also did the artwork for the gunslinger and his artwork is um one of the best things about the book in my opinion um, being a small press release it was advertised in magazines, um, in uh, genre magazines, and in bookseller catalogs, the first um, the first printing was released in 1982 and flew under the radar of almost everybody. Um, but it did sell out, and then when it showed up on the works other works by Stephen King list in 1983's Pet Cemetery as The Dark Tower. Fans and constant readers looked at that list and they were like, wait, what? What What the hell is that? Wait, what? <laughs> what is the Dark Tower? And why, why didn't my bookstore carry it? Why haven't I heard of this? Um, so letters started flooding in. Grant and Stephen King discussed it and they decided to do a second printing of 10,000 copies, which um, also very, very quickly sold out. And... Um, it's one of the reasons why, even though it's not technically a limited edition, so to me, I know that there's a distinction between trade editions and limited editions, and the Gunslinger, the Grant printing of the Gunslinger, first or second printing, is not technically a limited edition. In fact, I believe the first printing was the largest print, print run that a small press had ever done up to that time, but... It is incredibly desirable. It is incredibly um, valuable. And so to me, that makes it enter into a different realm um, and sort of in my mind becomes a limited edition because it is a fraction of the um, trade edition print runs. And, you know, honestly, a book in crappy condition is uh, sold recently for $1,500 on eBay. Copies of The Gunslinger in really nice shape go for thousands of dollars. And if that doesn't make it limited, at least in the sense of who can buy it, I don't know what does. So it's one of my grails that is forever out of reach. But anyway, the trade paperback edition came out in the late 80s, and finally everybody who wanted to um, had the ability to pick it up and read the first installment of the epic, um, the epic long saga of the Dark Tower. And it has been, of course, available and in print. Um, it was available and in print until the early 2000s when the revised edition was released. And that is the edition that has been um, in print ever since. I think it's, it's, fascinating and kind of naive, almost charmingly naive, that Stephen King wouldn't realize that people would want anything that he wrote. He comes out with The, the Gunslinger, 1982. It's more of a boutique, um, a boutique sale. It's different than anything else he's ever put out, and he figures, you know, a lot of his fans won't want to read it. But... They did, um, and the demand and the the uproar was so much, and I, I just think it's just, it's really interesting that that could have caught Stephen King and Donald Grant flat-footed, that there would be um, sort of a limit to the demand 
for Stephen King, who in the early 80s was already one of the most popular authors in America, at least if not, if not the entire world. So there's eight books in the series, and two of them I would consider um, Stone Cold classics. The second book, The Drawing of the Three, is absolutely one of my favorite Stephen King novels of all time. And the fourth book, uh, Wizard and Glass, is also, I think, a masterpiece. One of the best things that Stephen King has ever written. But I first read the revised edition of The Gunslinger when I was in college because I had heard that it's, you know, this whole story is it's a really big deal and you should check it out. And I knew that the final three books were going to be coming out. And so I was interested and I read The Gunslinger and I thought, eh, it's okay. Um, each of the five sections has interesting set pieces. Um, there are parts of it that are very memorable. The slaughter in Tull and of course the slow mutants um, under the mountain and the heartbreaking scene with Roland and Jake, um, those things stick in the memory, but I finished it and I was like, uh, I guess, you know, it's just not for me. I'm, I'm not really a fantasy, a fan of fantasy or even spaghetti Westerns, um, necessarily all the things that inspired Stephen King. I'm not necessarily, um, inherently a fan of. And so it was a while, um, months if not a couple of years and before i was still in college and i picked up the drawing of the three and almost immediately everything clicked i was sucked into the world i found the book to be surprisingly funny and suspenseful and exciting and then then i was hooked and over the next couple of years i i finished the entire series and <clears throat> one of these days I will start over and and take the journey to the Dark Tower again. But one of the things that I wouldn't necessarily look forward to um, is getting through the first book again. And that's not to say that it's bad. Um, the original version really, I mean, written over so many years with disparate parts and separate pieces cobbled together, um, really is kind of disjointed and dry. It's interesting. I think it's essential for Stephen King collectors to have a copy of the original text in your collection, but um, I thoroughly, I enjoyed much more the revised edition, and to me that is definitive because it's, it's the one that Stephen King considers definitive, and it's much smoother it reflects Stephen King's much more mature and capable style that he had, um, you know, 33 years after he wrote that first line. Um, so at, at some point I will take the journey to the tower again, and I will look forward to books two and four as as they were the real highlights for me my my first time around but anyway it's it's an interesting piece um even when he was writing it in the 70s working on it and publishing the stories individually stephen king knew that it would go on to be this epic work and potentially one of the greatest popular american novels of all time but and it certainly goes on to do epic and interesting and memorable things but the first book is um, a very very humble beginning and um, and that's okay because it goes on to be the linchpin of the entire Stephen King universe and I think it's really important to know about the mythology of the gunslinger and of Midworld and Roland and the tower because it does show up in so many other novels. Um, and when I, I read other novels and hadn't read The Dark Tower yet, and you know, I still enjoyed them, but I need to go back and reread so many things because I think now I would understand them more and enjoy them more. 
than I did the first time around. But I think I actually enjoy all the books that sort of orbit the the world of the tower more so than I enjoy the the books that comprise the Dark Tower um, themselves. So that's my that's my confession. Um, forgive me, SK fans, for I have sinned, um, <laughs> but it's the truth. It, it's it's not for everybody, and and that's okay. But anyway, um, thank you as always to Noah for showing amazing first edition copies. Um, I really appreciate your help uh, putting these videos together, and thanks to you, the the viewers, and um, I always enjoy hearing what you have to say. So if you have questions, comments, um, let me know. If you think the Dark Tower is just simply the magnum opus, the greatest single thing that Stephen King has ever written, um, let me know. I'm always fascinated to hear people's perspectives. But and I and I will I will take the journey again and I'm excited to experience it again and see if it changes my perspective. But anyway, wherever you are, I hope you have a great rest of your day and take care. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.